Hello everyone and welcome to our end of year and new year service. We are happy to join together with new visitors and our King Church International family in Windsor, in London and in Robertson, South Africa. A big hug to you all. In our service today, we're saying goodbye to 2023 and a welcome to 2024. This is a moment of crossover when we will pray together for God's blessing in the coming year. But first, we're going to look at just some of the highlights of the past eventful year of King's Church International, during which we celebrated 80 years of God's faithfulness to us as a church. <laughs> so many highlights. It's a remarkable year. It seems to have gone by so quickly. But what were your highlights? Presumably the women's conference was one of them? Yes, the women's conference was a very special time, very powerful time also with Pastor Johanna Castellanos. She were with us and the women really, they received a new vision, a new passion from God. And wow, we can see now the results. And also, we, in all, all the conference we have through the year, in reality, we receive a lot from God. Mm -hmm. New fire, new passion. In, in June, with Pastor Cesar and Emma Claudia, oh, it was amazing. a great time, great time for the UK. And wow, but we are so encouraged by you, my darling. You are our pastor, and we are encouraged by your ministry, by your leading the teams, but all the conference you are planning, but you're preaching, of course, wow, he's my favorite preacher. Mm -hmm. And it, it is wonderful to see how the Lord used you and with all your heart, with all your love, how much you are blessing us, as, are blessing all this ministry also online. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always believed, and I was always taught by my father, but also from Timothy, the book of Timothy, where the Apostle Paul writes to, to a young pastor, and he said, whatever you do, you've got to teach the word and preach the word. And that's something I've always paid attention to. And I'm so thrilled that this year we've been able to train up many of the leaders and their preaching and teaching in the different series has also been very powerful. It's been a delight uh, to see that. Um, but for me, one of the highlights, actually, I mean, this is all great, but one of the highlights that I think marked the year was the 40 days of prayer in the summer. And that was followed, we had a, a break, and then that was followed by 10 days. So we had 50 days. So we came back to the time of Jubilee. You remember that we had every morning, 5.30 to I 7. I never will forget that. And I think <laughs> no one in our church, more than, sometimes more than 300 people every morning for 5.30 in the morning to 7.15, wow, all people were focused, you know, in prayers, and I was so amazed to see ready, 5.30 o'clock, welcome everybody, uh, and in this special time of prayers, 40 days that mark really this church, this ministry in Church International, we were really focused 
in, in God, seeking God for revival in our hearts and in the church and in the nation. Mm -hmm. We are so grateful for this special time of 50, 50 on the end, because after the 40 days of prayers, we have 10 days more of fasts and prayers. Eh? What do you think about that time? Well, yeah, it was a, it's a discipline, 5.30 to 7 every morning, and what was it, 6 to 7.15, 7.30 in the evening. But the support from everybody, so many, I mean, hundreds of you uh, in King's Church International engaged with us. It wasn't just one or two or a few uh, or like a, a, a minority of people praying. And, and I believe that the Lord has done something deep in our hearts, showing us that we really need to seek God, that we've got to be real about God. We can't play at church. And to see things change in our nation and in our, in our, in our lives, we have to really seek the Lord. We break up the hard ground, as the Bible says, but we, we, and we repent of sins and, and we pay a price to build the, the church of God. And I know that every prayer that was prayed, God is going to hear and answer that. But because of it, there's come a new, you can feel there is a new spirit of prayer. My dad used to say he could, he could go into a church and instantly know whether it was a praying church. Yes, actually after all, all that prayer and um, how the DNA of the church changed, and we had this spirit of prayer from Bogota in the end of this year. Pastor uh, Emma started a global intercession, which included all the churches of the vision that we are part of this vision. And we are praying for 40 days, 40 days of prayers. We had Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 7.30. And every day, basically, the church around the churches around the world are praying 24 hours. It's a great cover, and also for King Church International, we can see how everybody is coming, everybody is happy, everybody is full of prayers because we know that is the key to touch the heart of God, but also to see every kind of answers, which is amazing, amazing. Why that happened this year in the 2023, and we will start our 2024 with prayers and we will see the great harvest and all the blessings the Lord has for us. This conference coming up is coming on the back of people all around the world praying for all this time, including many, uh, many of you here. Uh, what's the theme of the conference? What's the word you want to share with us? Well, basically the RIMA award for this international <clears throat> conference, the theme of the uh, conference is the great harvest. And the word is from Job. Uh, chapter 2 verses 23 and 24 that speak to us about the new outpouring of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and told also us about the great harvest that the Lord promised to us and we believe because the Lord is faithful to his promises. Amen. Well I, I believe and the Bible teaches it that the, the latter rains it comes in readiness to, to see the great in gathering and just as they they have the early rains in, in Israel and the, and the latter rains. It's all key to, to, to harvest. And the greatest harvest into the kingdom of God is coming. And it will come in the UK as well. And just uh, before uh, we go today, I want to share a word. I won't uh, take too much time here. But I'd like you, if you do have your Bibles, I'll give you a moment, wherever you are in South Africa or in the UK, London, Windsor, just to open and read Genesis 15. Uh, the promise that God made to Abraham, or Abraham as he was at the time. It says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, or Abraham as he became. Do not be afraid. There you go, the Christmas theme. Don't be afraid. I am your shield, your very great reward. And another translation of that is, your reward will be very great. And it says in verse 5, God took him outside and said, look at the heavens and count the stars if indeed you can count them. Then he said, so shall your offspring be. And then what was his response? It said, he believed the Lord and he credited it to him for righteousness. I want to say at the start of this uh, new year that's coming to, that we all need to listen, uh, learn from this. First of all, listen to God. This is the word of the Lord uh, came to him. 
And we need to hear the word of the Lord. We hear so many people speaking, giving their opinions. Even in the church, people can say, this is what I think, this is what I think. We need to read the word of God and let God light up this word to us as well. And of course, he speaks uh, to us in uh, dreams and, and, and visions as well, but always in, uh, in, in uh, consistent with his word, the Bible. Listen, the second thing is look. I said, look and see. And this, this is when uh, he needed to have possibilities, began to visualize something much greater than he'd ever seen before. And he was one man, but he was promised this uh, limitless uh, inheritance. And we need to dream big, much bigger in this year. Believe what God can do in you. You are more than you think you are. You can achieve more than you think you are. God has brought you together. God has brought us together for a purpose. God has brought our families together for a purpose. God has put our churches together, each group, each life group, uh, each uh, congregation. And, and this is the time when we really need to say, God, something, something big is happening uh, in the world and we need to see you do something big. We have seen after these terrible events that happened in Israel and the brutalities against uh, the, the Jewish people and all that followed since that, but we can see that uh, many people uh, have come on the march in their tens of thousands, uh, and many of them uh, with, with a non-Christian uh, view of the world. We need to see the people of God rising up with faith. We need to see churches seeing sudden growth. We need to see many people being one in. And we get that vision, not by just dreaming ourselves of what we want, but when we look at the word of God and when we hear the promises of God, such as uh, mentioned in Joel. So we need to listen to God in the new year. We need to look not with natural eyes, but we need to look with the, the eyes of God-given vision. And, and thirdly and finally, we need to live by faith. It said he believed God. When you have something, it seems not possible to accomplish it naturally. But when we say, God, I'm here, uh, I believe you, doesn't matter what my situation is, my age is, what my bank account is, uh, is, wherever I'm at, God, I believe you can do something in me. I believe he's gonna do something very special. And, and, and what happened last year has just been paving the way for this preparing. So I'd like you to join us in prayer. Take my hand, please, if you're with family. And I want us to begin this new year, start the new year with prayer, with consecration to God. Remember, the Bible starts, in the beginning, God. Always put God first, before your business, before anything, before any relationship. Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for your goodness and mercy to us over this, not just past year, but as we celebrated as a church, 80 years you've helped this church through many different situations, many storms, sadnesses, successes, and you've been faithful. And we thank you for so many faithful people, some of whom went to heaven to their reward in this past year. And we thank you for their lives. And we thank you, Lord, for all who have gone before. But we thank you for the people who are here now, the children, for the young people who are growing up with a love for God, for the families, for the singles, for people, Lord, of advancing years who still have such a focus on you. And we call out to you, Lord, you are the same God of Abraham, the same God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who worked miracles and can work miracles. And whatever the situation around, we call to you, Lord, at the start of this year, do something this year, such as we've never seen before. May we really know God. May we listen to God. May we look with the eyes uh, of faith and may we live uh, by faith. And I pray your blessing now, Lord, uh, upon every individual, upon every couple, upon every family, every one of our families, every family member, upon this church and upon the churches around the world. We thank you, Lord, for the churches that we're connected with, the ministry, Lord, that is there with Pastor Cesar and Pastor uh, Emma Castianos in the great church in Bogota, we pray your blessing upon them. We pray, Lord, for every church that lifts up the name of Jesus, 
that you would watch over them and protect them. We pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray you will give wisdom and grace. We pray for peace, O oh God, but we also pray for protection of the Jewish people. We pray, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit on all people in a new way. Lord, whether they're Israelis or Palestinians, whatever country or continent, Lord, pour out your spirit, we pray, and we thank you that we're alive in this moment and that we can worship you and give ourselves to you. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Well, you know, at the conference, we sang an old hymn. Uh, and in this old hymn, How Good Is the God We Adore, it thanks God for his blessings in the past and looks forward uh, to the future as we put our faith in God for all that is ahead. Let's, uh, let's listen to this clip and join in right now. your families and church family and stay focused on sharing the good news of Jesus in everywhere. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you and Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year everyone. everyone. Thank you for joining us today. King's Church International is a multi-generational, multi-racial church with over 50 nationalities represented and it began with just five people in Slough during World War II. Today, our congregations meet on Sundays in Windsor, UK, Westminster, London, and in Robertson, South Africa. But throughout the week, we meet in many different areas in smaller groups known as life groups, which are the heart of the life of the church. We have age-specific programs for children and youth. And we also sponsor a Christian school in Windsor, which started in 2012, as well as supporting several schools in West Africa. Our focus as a church is on sharing the good news of Jesus, locally and globally, and developing committed disciples of Jesus and forming them as leaders. We follow a process known as the G12 vision, following the example of Jesus in training 12 disciples. The G12 vision, which was pioneered in one of the world's largest churches in Bogota, Colombia, 
is very similar to the approach of 18th century evangelist John Wesley, which brought lasting personal and social transformation in the UK and throughout the world. If you want to find out more about our ministry or get connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. God bless you. Thank you.